Let's begin with this week's cover story. This is the Kharkovka Dam and this is where it is located on the map. The dam sits in the Dnipro River and this is around 60 kilometers east of the Ukrainian city of Kherson, which is, by the way, currently under Russian occupation. The Kharkovka Dam was built in the Soviet era. It holds back a reservoir that is called the Kharkovka Sea. That is because there's so much water in this reservoir. Now, as we speak, something like 44 cubic miles of water is now gushing down the river Dnipro. This dam was destroyed on the 6th of June. Who did it? We still don't know. Ukraine says there was a blast around 2.50 a.m. local time and soon the dam partially collapsed. Kiev says Russia blew up the dam so that the Dnipro River could swell up and come in the way of Ukraine's long-anticipated counter-offensive. Russia, on the other hand, is accusing Ukraine of sabotage, basically the two sides once again pointing the finger at each other. And in this program, we don't really want to get into trying to figure out what happened and who did it. What we instead want to do is show you the scale of the humanitarian disaster that has befallen on the people who've already been driven to the edge by this war. The water from the dam has overrun dozens of towns and villages along the Dnipro River. Some of these towns are under Russian occupation already. Some are still with Ukraine. But this disaster has not spared either. Kherson, the biggest city on the path of the river, this is what it looked like before the dam collapsed. And this is what it looks like now. Parts of Kherson are literally underwater. You have the elderly in wheelchairs being evacuated. Animals swimming their way to safety. Now look at the town of Korsunka. It is completely submerged. The Russian appointed authorities have ordered residents to leave. But many of them never had the time or the chance to run. Water entered the village less than 15 minutes after the dam's collapse. There were people there. There were people everywhere. They just didn't want to leave. I mean, they didn't even have time to leave. The water came very quickly. No one knows how many people have lost their lives in this town and the others, or how much the damage is. What we do know is that as we speak, thousands of people have been left without access to drinking water. Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky has urged the international community to help. He's also visited some flood-hit regions. Russia says that President Vladimir Putin is personally monitoring the situation in the Kherson region. The casualty and the damage only just begins here. You see, the collapse of the Kharkovka Dam has not just killed people and destroyed houses, it has also destroyed Ukraine's agriculture. Let me remind you that Ukraine is one of the world's top agricultural producers and exporters. It supplies fruits, vegetables, grain, oil seeds to countries around the world could include you. Ukraine is also one of the world's top five grain suppliers. Bangladesh is one of Ukraine's major wheat importers. So is Malaysia, Egypt and Pakistan. Sri Lanka imports maize from Ukraine, as does Israel, China, Portugal and Libya, among others. India imports sunflower oil from Ukraine. So does Qatar, the United Arab Emirates, Kenya and Taiwan. Kherson is among Ukraine's most fertile lands. In terms of what's grown here, you have watermelons, onions, tomatoes, sunflower, soybean, wheat, and now you have dirty flood water from drains, cemeteries, garbage dumps flowing through this town. This dam was the only source for 31 irrigation systems, watering 584,000 hectares of land. Without it, it won't be long before some of Ukraine's most fertile lands become barren. What's next? The global supply chain will be impacted. Prices will go up, food prices, and you will end up paying more for grain, for sunflower oil, and for all those other products that we were talking about. The cost of this disaster does not end here. The water from the reservoir that is fast draining is used to cool the nuclear reactors of the Zaporizhia plant, Europe's largest nuclear plant. Remember, it still contains tens of thousands of kilograms of radioactive materials. In case the cooling process stops, the nuclear fuel will start to melt, which will then create high pressure, resulting in an explosion. What happens following an explosion? Well, we know what happened in Chernobyl. 
Yes, a nuclear leak, an explosion that could give rise to invisible radioactive clouds, clouds that could travel anywhere, depending on the weather. The UN's nuclear watchdog says there's no short-term risk, but analysts say that it could take up to five years to repair the dam. Where is the guarantee that the war will end by then? What is the guarantee that the nuclear reactor will find an alternate source of water? So clearly, it's a really, really serious situation that has emerged after the destruction of that dam. And for more on this, we're now being joined by Alina Falova, who's uh, Ukraine's former Deputy Defence Minister. Thank you so much, ma'am, for joining us. Uh, first of all, what's the latest you can tell us on the situation with the flooding, with the dam? And I'll be anywhere closer to knowing who did it. Uh, well, the latest situation is that we continue evacuation of uh, those people who suffer it on the right bank. Uh, we uh, unfortunately don't have an access to the left bank and people are uh, asking for assistance from the left bank, but we cannot reach them. And Russians do not provide the possibility to be evacuated. And as for who did it, obviously this is not Ukrainians, because for us this is like a huge losses of the animals, of the plants, of the this is like a huge uh, threat of diseases. Uh, we have uh, our people suffering, and uh, actually uh, the Russians did it uh, to stop the um, prognosed uh, offensive, which Ukrainian forces are going to have anyway. Uh, but they were so afraid of this that they decided to blow up the dam, and that was done in a very silly way. Alina Falova, thank you so much for joining us with that perspective. Let's hope something is done. Thank you. Thank you. We also have Glenn Deason joining us now from Oslo. He's a professor of international relations at the University of Southeastern Norway. Uh, Mr. Deason, thank you so much for joining us. What is your sense of what actually happened with the dam? We just heard the Ukrainians say it was the Russians who blew it up. What, what are you picking up from the ground? Well, I guess a simple answer is we, we don't really know yet. Uh, so far, there's been unsubstantiated accusations thrown uh, from both sides, both blaming each other. Uh, but without any evidence, I think it mostly reveals biases. Right. Um, so, you know, if, if, if you had to take, take a guess on what happens now, obviously the biggest concern is around the nuclear reactor. Could there actually be a risk to that, a threat to that? Uh, the, the, of course, the Saporoshi nuclear power plant it it cools down its reactors with this uh, with this uh, uh, with with the water which is held back by the dam. So this could create a problem. Uh, in terms of what happens next, I think that this will mainly be um, war in the information space uh, because uh, both sides are trying to convince the international community that it was the other side. Uh, I think that the media, to be honest, have been quite uh, dishonest about this, lacking from the narrative is the fact that the Washington Post actually reported last year that uh, Ukrainian Ma Major General Andrei Kovalchuk, uh, the officer who oversees the preparation for Ukraine's counteroffensive, he confirmed actually that Ukraine had attacked the floodgates at this dam with American HIMARS missiles. And why? Well, he gave the explicit purpose. It was to flood the river to prevent Russian crossings. All right. The media wars that are playing out around this, not very clear as to what the actual facts on the ground are, and sometimes it may not be clear for a period of time. Thank you so much for joining us with that particular viewpoint on, on what uh, might pleasure. actually be happening here. Thank you so much for joining us.